Number one tells us that we have a circle with an area of eight pi centimeters squared, and that's gonna be dilated so that the image has an area of 32 pi square centimeters, and it wants us to find the scale factor. So remember that when we're comparing areas, okay, so areas are gonna give us um, our k squared. Okay, so areas are going to give us our scale factor squared. So when we compare new versus original, okay, that's going to equal our k squared. So in this case, our new area is 32 pi and our original area is 8 pi. We will see that the pi's can divide out and then both 32 and 32 does divide by 8 and 32 divided by 8 is 4. So that's our k squared value. So then we'll square root that and get that our k value is 2. Number 2, a trapezoid has an area of 100 square units. Um, and then it says what scale factor would be required to dilate it to have each of these new areas. And so this is going back and finding the K again. So remember that when you compare these two areas, you're going to get the K squared. So when we do um, the new area divided by the original area, so in this case, 6400 divided by 100, that's 64. This is our K squared. So then we'll square root that to get our K value. So new area divided by original area will give us our k squared. Okay, in this case, 900 divided by 100 is 9. Square root that and get k equals 3. So new area is 100. Original area is 100. So that didn't change in size. So we know that that k value is 1. New area is 25. Original is 100. That's our k squared, which simplifies to 1 fourth. And so when we square root um, this, square root of 1 is 1, square root of 4 is 2. So our k value is 1 half. Final one, our new area is 4, our original is 100. If we simplify that, our k squared value is 1 over 25. Square root the 1 and you get 1, square root the 25 and you get 5. Okay, next one. Um, a triangle has an area of 6 inches and a perimeter of 12. Suppose it's dilated by some scale factor and the area and perimeter of the image are calculated. Match each graph with the relationship it represents. So when we're talking perimeter, okay, perimeters are multiplied by just your scale factors. You take your original times just your scale factor and for areas, you're multiplying by your scale factor squared. So when we multiply by just the K value, this is going to give us a straight line. Um, and when we're multiplying by K squared, now we're not keeping a linear or direct proportion. We're going to get some type of curve. So we know that graph B and C are dealing with our K value and a and D are dealing with our K squared or our area. Um, so when we take a look at graph B, we see that the larger numbers are kind of down here at 10, 20, 30, 40. So those are our perimeters. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 are our scale factors. And then we see that flipped in graph C. So we see the smaller numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4. So those are our scale factors and then 10, 20, 30, 40, representing those perimeters. And so let's take a look here. So number one says the scale factor is the X value, the perimeter is the Y value. So scale factor is the X value, perimeter is the Y value, this is graph C. So the other one um, dealing with perimeter is graph B. And so that says perimeter is the X value, which we see, um, and scale factor is the Y value. 
All right, then um, in the other, in the next ones, we're dealing with the area. So when you see, again, we see this one, two, three on this scale. This is our k squared or our scale, well, not our k squared, but this is our k, our scale factor, and then our areas. And where this one has the x value as the areas and the y value as the scale factor. Um, so number two here says the scale factor is the x value. So which one of these had the scale factor as the x value? And that's graph D. Um, so that leaves graph A for number four. Number four, a polygon has an area of 10 square units is dilated by, okay, so area of 10 square units is dilated by a scale factor of K, find the area of the new image. So they're giving us our K value in each of these problems. So remember we, for our new area, we need to take our original and we need to multiply it by our K squared. Since there's two dimensions in finding area, we're gonna dilate we're gonna end up with this K factor in there twice. So we're gonna take our original area in each of these problems, which is 10. Okay, so we're gonna do 10 times the scale factor squared. So I'm just gonna get this written for all of them. Then we're gonna take and multiply times the scale factor squared. So four squared, 1.5 squared, one squared, one third squared, and then this will get us our new area. Um, so 10 times four squared, so 10 times 16 is gonna give us 160 units squared for our new area. Um, 10 times 1.5 squared is going to give us 22.5 units squared for the new area here. 10 times one squared stays 10, so just 10 units squared. That one didn't change in size. And then 10 times um, one third squared here is 1.11 units squared. Number five, parallelogram A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime, so this larger parallelogram here. Um, is was obtained by dilating um, parallelogram A, B, C, D using A as the center of dilation. So taking this shaded parallelogram and dilating it, keeping point A kind of the same since that's the center of dilation. What is the scale factor? So remember scale factor is um, kind of how much you multiplied each length by. So we see to go from a b to a prime b prime okay that's double the length so this would fit in there twice okay so that scale factor each side length is two times bigger how many congruent copies of the original parallelogram fit inside of the larger one so we see here's one two three four parallelograms fit in there so how does the area of parallelogram A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime compare to parallelogram A, B, C, D? So this green one is four times bigger than the original since four of the original fit into the green one. So if parallelogram A, B, C, D has an area of 12 square units. So if this one is 12 square units, what's the area of the larger one? So we know that that 12 square unit parallelogram fits into the larger one four times. So then the larger one would be 48 units squared. Number six, select all solids whose cross sections are dilations of some two dimensional shape using a point directly above the shape as the center and scale factors ranging from zero to one. Um, so this means that it's getting smaller as we go because you've got your point of dilation. You've got whatever's happening, um, like whatever shape it is, the original cross-section would be the scale factor of one. 
um, and then all the way up to a scale factor of zero going to a point. And so then this is just gonna keep getting smaller as you go. So a cylinder does not get smaller as we go. The cross sections stay the same all the way up. Okay, so that's not good. A cube, same thing. It's got a bunch of squares that stay the same size from top to bottom. Okay, so those cross sections don't change. Triangular prism as well stays triangles all the way from top to bottom. Um, a cone, that one certainly does. Okay, starts with a circle. And then that circle keeps getting smaller as we go up to a up to a point. And then a triangular pyramid would be the same. So a triangular pyramid starts with a triangle and then goes up to a point. So it keeps getting smaller. The cross sections keep getting smaller as they go up. So that one would be good as well. Uh, number seven, express, um, select all expressions which give the measure of angle A. So arc cosine, so cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And so for A, this one is the adjacent. This one is the hypotenuse. This is the opposite. So cosine would be 28 over 53, which is what we see here. So this would be good. Um, cosine being 45 over 53 would not be good, okay, because 45 is the opposite of angle A. Arc sine, so sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse, so 45 is the opposite, not 28 from angle A. Um, so arc sine being 45 over 53 would be good. Tangent, so if we're using the tangent, that's the opposite over the adjacent. The opposite of angle A is 45, so this one is not going to be good. Um, but this one would be 48, or sorry, 45 over 28, opposite over adjacent.